Here we're gonna look at a nice problem from the Putnam exam. So this is the 2007 edition and it is question B3. And it has to do with a recursively defined sequence. So we wanna define x zero equal one, and then xn plus one is equal to three xn plus the floor of xn times the square root of five. And then our goal is to find a closed form for x sub 2007. And in fact, as we'll see, we'll find a closed form for the arbitrary nth term. So that'll be kind of nice. All right, so let's look at some hints before we jump into the solution. So my first hint says that being asked for a closed form means that this is probably related to a well-known sequence. So maybe this goes without saying, but it would be kind of hard to write down a closed form unless it had to do with some well-known numbers already. Then my next hint is that a one-step recursion plus the addition of this floor function feels like it should be a two-step recursion. And maybe this is more clear once you start playing around with it, but just keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into the solution. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is explore. And we're gonna explore just by making a chart of the first several terms from this sequence. So maybe I'll put that here, so let's explore. Okay, so let's maybe get a chart of these values on the board. Okay, so there's our chart. So the n equals zero value gives us x sub zero, which is one. Then we've got x sub one is five, x sub two is 26, x sub three is 136, x sub four is 712, and then so on and so forth. So like I said in my hints, this is probably related to some sort of well-known sequence. And actually, this is related to a well-known sequence, and we can see that by looking at x sub n over 2 to the n minus 1. Instead of just x sub n, it turns out that if you divide it by this power of 2, you get something that's a little bit more interesting. So here for this first entry, we'll get 2, because that's going to be 1 divided by half, and then we'll get 5, and then we'll get 13, and then here we'll get 34, 89, then the next one will be 233, and then finally this last one that's on the board will be 610. And now, I'm not gonna go through this direction of the solution, but what I will say is that this could bring us to the following guess for a closed form, and that would be x sub n equals two to the n minus one times the two n plus third Fibonacci number. So again, this is in terms of a well-known sequence. Now, if you wanna ask me the question, does this count as a closed form? If we just go ahead and plug 2007 in here, is F sub something considered a closed form for a number? I think probably not, so you need to use the closed form classification of Fibonacci numbers. But the strategy that we're gonna take actually will not require that. We're gonna use mostly the second hint, which was a one-step recursion along with a floor function feels like it should be some sort of deeper recursion. And we should start looking at a two-step recursion. So let's maybe put that into the following guess. So we're gonna guess that x sub n plus two equals, maybe we'll say capital A x sub n plus one plus capital B x sub n. So again, that's a two-step recursion. And now all that's really involved is playing with these numbers. And actually you can get these numbers capital A and capital B off of this other guess, but we're not gonna do that. So again, we can just play with these numbers in this chart to get values for A and B. And what you'll see works is that we'll have A equal to six and B equal to minus four. So here we have six X N plus one. Um, minus 4xn. So our guess is that this gives us a two-step recursion for our sequence. Well, let's just make sure that makes sense for what we have so far. So notice 26, well, that's definitely equal to six times five, which is 30 minus four times one. So it checks out there. The next, you can check that 136 is equal to 6 times 26 minus 4 times uh, 5. That's not too hard to check. And in fact, all of the rest of these are also not too hard to check. Okay, so what do we need to do now? 
Well, what we need to do is show that our recursively defined sequence over here involving the for function satisfies this two-step recursion. And so that's what we'll do next. Okay, on the last board we ended with the following claim. Our sequence x sub n satisfies the following two-step recursion. So we have x sub n plus two equals six x sub n plus one minus four x sub n for n bigger than or equal to four. But this sequence satisfying this two-step recursion and this one-step recursion means that this sequence can be equivalently defined with this two-step recursion instead of this kind of gnarly one-step recursion that involves a floor function. So that's actually nice because we can work with that a little bit better. Okay, so let's maybe see how we would prove this. So what we need is that x sub n plus two equals 6x sub n plus one minus 4x sub n. So we need that to be true. So now what we'll do is apply the recursion, the defining recursion, not the recursion that we're trying to prove to both sides of this equation and then reduce this equation to an equation which is clearly true. As you can see, we're gonna cheat a little bit at the end, but I'll let you guys fill in the details. It'll be a homework problem. Okay, so first what we will do is apply the recursion to this xn plus two term. So I'll just say that this is true if and only if we have xn plus one times three plus the floor of xn plus one times the square root of five equals six xn plus one minus four xn. Okay, so what did we do there? We just applied the recursion to the left-hand side of this equation. But now notice that this guy right here can cancel with this six and leave us with a three because those are like like terms. Okay, nice. Now we're gonna apply the recursion to this xn plus one term. And we're gonna do that on both sides of the equation. So that's gonna give us the floor of, now we're gonna have the square root of five outside of this whole thing. And then xn plus one can be replaced with three xn plus the floor of xn times the square root of five. So it's something like that. So notice we've got a floor within a floor here. Great, and then we can do the same thing over here. So that's gonna give us three times the quantity. Well, so now we're gonna have three X in, and then plus the floor of X in times the square root of five, and this is gonna be minus four X in on the outside. Okay, so that's what we've got, but notice we can simplify that right-hand side a little bit. And so now this is gonna be if and only if, I'm gonna bring this down, we'll have the floor of root five, and then three xn plus the floor of xn root five, like that. And now notice we're gonna have three times three is nine xn minus four xn, so that gives us five xn and then finally plus three times the floor of xn times root five, like that. So in fact, we have reduced proving our claim to proving the following statement. This statement seems like it would be really hard if we were just dealing with terms from the sequence, but you can actually prove this for all positive integers m. In other words, this is true for all m in the natural numbers. And what I, what I mean by this, I'll mean this statement right here where we have replaced x sub n with just the number m. So in other words, we have the floor of the square root of five, three m plus the floor of m times root five. So that's what this left-hand side says. And then this right-hand side is gonna be five m plus three floor m root five, like that. And so this is what I'm not gonna prove, but I'm gonna leave this guy I, as a homework exercise for you. And if someone gives me a nice solution, I'll pin it to the top comment. Okay, good. So like I said, by our homework exercise, we know that this is true. But since this is true, our sequence satisfies this two-step recursion. But what that means is we can redefine our sequence as satisfying this two-step recursion along with two initial points instead of one initial point. And that's what we'll do next.
So far we've shown our originally defined sequence, which has a one step recursion and the floor function can be redefined as a sequence involving a two step recursion with two initial conditions. So we've got x0 is one, x1 is five, and then we have xn plus two equals six xn plus one minus four xn, and that's gonna be true for all n bigger than or equal to zero. And now we're gonna find a closed form for x sub n, and this and thus x sub 2007 using generating functions. There's a bunch of ways to do this. This is just the way I like to do it. So let's go ahead and define our generating function for this sequence. I'll call it capital F of t. And that's going to be equal to this sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x sub n t to the n where this variable t is what we call a formal variable. In other words, this is just a combinatorial tool. If you consider it as a real or a complex number, then yeah, we do have some sort of interval of convergence, but we're not gonna be super worried about that. Now, since we have a two-step recursion, two initial conditions, what we wanna do is pull out the first two terms. So we'll pull out the n equals zero term, that'll give us x sub zero times t to the zero, which is just one plus five times t, because that's x sub one t to the one, the sum as n goes from two to infinity of x sub n t to the n. So that's all of the rest of the terms. Now I'm gonna go ahead and re-index that sum so that I can easily apply this recursion. So I'll do that by replacing n with n plus two. So n becomes n plus two. But that means when n plus two equals two, n is equal to zero, so that changes our starting point. But then that's gonna put an n plus two here and an n plus two here. So that's how that re-indexing will go. Notice my upper end point of my summation won't change because that's just infinity. Now I can go ahead and apply my recursion just from this formula right here. I could have done that without re-indexing, but this just makes it simpler. So let's see, we're gonna have one plus five t and then we'll have plus this sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of six x sub n plus one minus four x sub n, and this is gonna be times t to the n plus two, like that. Okay, now next what we wanna do is maybe split this into two sums and then make sure that the index here of the sequence matches the exponent of the t. So let's do that all at once. So we'll have one plus five t, and then we'll have plus, so we'll take a t out of this first one. Maybe we'll go ahead and take a six t out of this first one. Then we'll have the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of x sub n plus one t to the n plus one like that. Okay, good. And then we'll have minus four t squared. We've got to take a t squared out of that to have those match. And then we'll have this sum as n goes from zero to infinity of x sub n t to the n. Okay, so now we're actually in pretty good shape because notice that this guy right here is actually just our original generating function f of t. So that's cool. And then this one is very, very close to being our original generating function. So notice we'll do a re-indexing of this to change this n plus one to n. But if we change this n plus one to n, that means we're gonna start this sum at n equals one instead of n equals zero. So let's see. That means that this is not quite f of t. It's f of t without the very, very first term. So what that means is that this is f of t minus one. Again, without the very, very first term, which we know is one. Okay, great. So now we can maybe like clean this up a little bit. This is gonna give us one plus five t like that. And then we're gonna have plus six t. And then this is gonna be f of t minus one minus four t squared f of t, like that. So let's look at maybe the extreme left and right hand side of the equation. Notice we've got a functional equation for f of t. 
So let's see if we can move some things around here and combine anything. So notice we can distribute the 6t through. That's going to give us something like this. We'll have 1 minus t because we'll have 5t minus 6t. And then let's see, we'll have plus f of t and then 6t minus 4t squared. So that comes from this 6t times f of t and then this minus 4t squared times f of t. So we're left with something like that. Okay, I'll maybe go ahead and bring that up and we'll move on to the next step. In the last board, we found that our generating function satisfied the following equation. Now we can easily solve that for f of t. So let's see what that gives us. So we'll have over here on the left-hand side of the equation f of t, and then we'll have 1 minus 6t minus 4t squared. Sorry, that should be plus 4t squared. We get that from moving that stuff over to this left-hand side. Then over on the right-hand side, we have 1 minus t. Okay, good. So that's going to give us f of t equals 1 minus t over 1 minus 6t plus 4t squared. Now we want to think about decomposing this using partial fractions, but in order to do that, we need to find the roots of this polynomial 1 minus t plus 4t squared, so we know how to factor it. So let's go ahead and do that over here. So we'll find the roots of this just with the quadratic formula. So notice the roots of this will be given by t equals, so that negative b term, so that'll be 6 plus minus the square root of, well, we're going to have 36 minus 16, so 4 times 4 times 1, like that, all over 8, because it's 2 times 4. Okay, well, that simplifies pretty nicely. So notice this is going to be 6 plus minus, so that's going to be the square root of 20. We can bring a 4 out of that and we'll have 2 times the square root of 5, and this is all over 8. But now we can do some simplification here. That's going to give us 3 plus minus the square root of 5 all over 4. Okay, great. So that means that we can rewrite this as 1 minus t all over, well, we can factor a 4 out of the denominator, and then we'll have t minus one of these, so that's going to be 3 plus root 5 over 4, and then t plus, and then t minus the other one, so that's going to be 3 minus root 5 over 4, so something like that. Okay, so now let's maybe go ahead and bring that up to the top and then we'll finish it off. On the last board, we were able to show that this generating function had a rational function expression where the roots were factored in the denominator. I've cleaned that up a little bit. We've got f of t is one minus t over four times alpha minus t times beta minus t. Alpha is three plus root five over four. Beta is three minus root five over four. And here we've got alpha times beta is one quarter and alpha plus beta is three quarters. So that's just uh, useful to know so those arithmetic properties of alpha and beta as we move forward. So now we're going to go ahead and use partial fraction decomposition to turn this into something that we can easily re-expand as a power series. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. We know that we should be able to take f of t and write it as a over alpha minus t plus b over beta minus t. Great. So let's see how we can do that. Well, let's maybe multiply both sides of this equation by alpha minus t times beta minus t to get everything canceled. So let's see. On the left-hand side of the equation, what are we going to be left with? We're going to be left with 1 minus t over 4. That's because of this cancellation right here. Notice both those denominators cancel and we're just left with this four in the denominator. Then over on the right-hand side of the equation, we're gonna have a times beta minus t plus b times alpha minus t like that. 
Okay, now we can start extracting coefficients from the constant term and the t term from both sides of the equation to form a system of equations that we can use to solve for a and b. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So I'll just denote by one the constant terms on both sides of the equation and by t the coefficients of t on both sides of the equation. All right, so let's see. The constant terms on the right-hand side of the equation are a times beta plus b times alpha. And then over there on the left-hand side of the equation, it is 1 quarter, like that. And then let's see. On the right-hand side of the equation, the coefficient of t is minus a minus b. And over here, it's going to be minus 1 quarter, like that. Okay, so now we've got this system of equations. I'll maybe bring it up here that we can use to solve for a and b. Okay, so let's get to that. We have a beta plus b alpha equals one quarter. And then let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply this by negative one just to clean it up a little bit. So we're gonna have a plus b is also equal to one quarter. So we've got something like that. All right, so let's see what we can do with this. There's a number of ways to proceed from here. I'm gonna maybe just go with straight substitution. So let's say here we can notice that B is equal to one quarter minus A. So just subtracting A from both sides of the equation. Then we'll push this into the first equation. Let's see what that gives us. That gives us A times beta plus one quarter minus A times alpha equals one quarter like that. Okay, now let's see, we've got um, A times beta minus alpha equals, um, let's see, what is it gonna be? One quarter minus one quarter alpha like this. Okay, so let's see if we can simplify that a little bit. So we know beta minus alpha. Well, we can calculate that pretty easily. That's gonna be the square root of five over two. So that means we have a times root five over two equals, and then one quarter minus one quarter alpha. So let's see, that's gonna be one quarter and then one minus alpha. But let's see what one minus alpha is. That's gonna be like four over four minus that thing. So that's gonna give us one quarter. And then I think we're gonna have minus one minus root five over four. So we've got a nice expression for A. So now we can just divide both sides of that by root five over two, and that'll give us a solution for A. Now we can do the same thing for B, and then we'll have coefficients for A and B. But I'll just go ahead and jump to this generating function separated out with those coefficients that are essentially calculated right here. Okay, on the last board, we ended up with the following partial fraction decomposition for our generating function. So we've got this is kind of gnarly, but what's nice about it is we can start to expand it as a geometric series. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take a 1 over 8 times root 5 out of the whole thing, because that's like a common factor. And then that's going to leave me with minus 1 minus root 5, and then 1 over 1 minus t over alpha if I also bring an alpha out of the denominator like that. That's gonna be helpful so I can expand that like a geometric series because I need one over one minus something in order to do that easily. So we'll have the same kind of thing over here. So one plus three root five all over beta, and then this is gonna be multiplied by one over one minus t over beta, like that. Now we'll use our standard geometric series expansion. So that's gonna give us 1 over 8 root 5, and then we'll have minus 1 minus root 5 over alpha, then the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of t to the n over alpha to the n, plus now we have 1 plus 3 root 5 over beta, and then the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over of t to the n over beta to the n. Good. So now we can easily extract any of these that we... So now we can easily extract the xn term. Let's see what we have. So x sub n is going to be 1 over 8 times root 5. Then we'll have 1 
minus one minus root five over alpha times one over alpha to the n, and then plus one plus three root five over beta, and then one over beta to the n. So that's an arbitrary nth term. Now we can just plug in n equals 2007, and we've got a closed form for x sub 2007, which was our goal. That's a good place to stop.